let's go back a little bit in, in history. I remember when you fought on Thanksgiving weekend at the bomb factory in Dallas and you were <laughs> the, the first TV fight, probably fit about 2,500 people. To go from that probably four or five years ago to then fighting at AT&T Stadium, you're a diehard Cowboys fan. I feel like you are good friends now with Jerry Jones and the Jones family to fighting Mikey Garcia last March, nearly 50,000 people at AT&T Stadium. Uh, how much do you go back in and remember fondly that entire experience? Because for those that were not there and just on pay-per-view, the electricity in that stadium was off the charts. Oh, man, it was crazy. It really is a, a dream come true. Like, it's a big dream come true. I was even nervous fighting at Frisco at the star at the training facility in front of 16,000 people, I was nervous. Like, when they first told me I was going to fight there, I was going to fight my mandatory. And I'm like, man, he a nobody. Nobody knows him. I'm like, you think I can do that myself? And they're like, yeah, yes. you know, they said this. I sell it out and stuff like that. And then once I sold that out, and then it was like, yo, you finna fight at um, at t Center. I was I was real nervous. I didn't think, <laughs> you know, I didn't think the, that many people was gonna come, and once they came, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was humble, you know, and I was very, you know, appreciative of everybody coming and supporting me, and um, you know, even if they did come and support me and support Mike Garcia, they still came to watch me fight. So, you know, I was just, I was real thankful of everybody coming out and just supporting, you know, my fight with my name on it. So, I mean, it was a dream come true. You know, I was I was super excited. I was on a high for probably, you know, probably about three weeks. Like, man, it's my, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, it's my it's my city. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I, I'm I can't wait to fight there again. You know, I feel like who would be the right again. opponent? Who who would be the right opponent for you to fight there again? Because it has to be the right opponent, right? So, who would you want to fight at AT and T Stadium again if you got your opportunity? Man, me and Pacquiao probably do a, me and Pacquiao probably do a hundred thousand. <laughs> we fight it, we fight it uh, agency center. So um, AGT Stadium, I think Pacquiao, Pacquiao will be the you know perfect opponent. Where do you like fighting more? I know mean, you're a Dallas kid. They're, they're different venues all over the world, but Las Vegas is very special. Uh, you know, people want to headline in Vegas, but but where where is your favorite place to fight? Is it AT and T Stadium? Uh, definitely at home now. I used to be nervous. I used to be nervous fighting at home. Like, man, I'm fighting at home. Like, you get nervous, especially because you're fighting in front of family and friends. You're fighting in front of family and friends and mm. you know, people that have been knowing you since the first grade, <laughs> school teachers and stuff like that. So, you know, you're super nervous. But, you know, I like fighting at home. I definitely like fighting at home. It's a lot well, of love a fighting that, at home. Especially like the ring a, entrance and, pe and you looking in the crowd, you seeing people that you haven't seen before. And, you know, they're cheering for you, rooting for you. You know, you just feel a little... You know, you go ahead and, and I'm sure the, the energy, the electricity, there's a kid in your area, though, who says he's about two years away from fighting you, Virtual <laughs> T's Jr. He went ahead and he posted a photo when he was a little kid with you, and you were obviously more, you know, higher on the food chain. But, you know, do you kind of like the fact that these prospects are calling you out? They're like, yeah, I want to fight Spence, because I remember you were like that years ago yeah. when you were coming up. I mean, it just shows they're hungry. That's, that's what it's about. I mean, you got you to gotta show that you're hungry. You got to show that, you know, that, that you want the top dog and you want to take their spot. And, you know, as for me, you know, that, that keeps me on my toes because I know, you know, a younger guy, you know, wouldn't take – he wants what's mine. He wants what's mine. So, you know, he wouldn't work hard and he wouldn't do whatever it takes to do to get to that point. So, for me, you know, that's good because, I mean, me and Virgil started at the same gym, Rural Boston Gym. Uh, we had the same coach and everything, and, um, you know, just to see him get to that point, you know, it's great seeing because I remember him as a little kid, a little, little crybaby kid. <laughs> He's a mm -hmm. But now to see him get to this point and, um, you know, and looking to challenge me in about two, three years, it's good that he know that, that, you know, two, three years he might be ready, you know. But 
I don't see him. I don't. I don't see him. You know, beating me. But uh, you know, much respect for him. Much respect to him doing his thing and um, you know, getting to this level. I think 15 no, 15 knockouts, 16 no, 16 knockouts. So much respect to him doing his thing and um, you know, making Dallas look good and um, you know, putting on for the city. Errol, there have been talks about you and when you have you talk about gyms, but you train with Derek James. That the wars that you have with uh, Jermel Charlo are ones that could headline a pay-per-view if they could show those sparring sessions. Uh, can you tell us about how much you love mixing it up with Jermel Charlo because he's a world champion, you're a world champion, you seem to both be at the top of your game? Uh, that's my guy, Jermel. I mean, when, J when Jermel, because, like, usually, usually he's, he's in training camp but he's fighting before me. So I joined his training camp and just trained with him and then going to my training camp. And, uh, like, Jamel, you know, he's strong. I think his power – I think he got a little bit more confidence in his power now. He's talking about knocking everybody out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, he's looking good. I mean, me and his, his sparring, you know, I can't say it's war. It's not war. It's every time. You know, it's a lot of times it's real tactical. And, um, you know, we're going tick for tack and – um you know, it's just it's a great learning experience. Like they say, iron sharper iron, and um, it's definitely with him iron sharper iron because, you know, we, we're basically learning from each other. And um, what's the best sparring than sparring somebody that's you know a world champion too? So, I mean, it's great work and just having the experience he had and the experience that I have. You know, we put in some good work, but um, but that's but that's definitely that's definitely um, you know, Fox. Fox material, they can put that, they can put that on, <laughs> put that on as a fight night or something like that. Errol, how long do you see yourself here at 147? I know that you want to clean up, clean out the division. You want to be the undisputed unified welterweight champion in the world, but do you think that going up in weight to 154, possibly even 160, is in your future? You're 30 years of age now. How long do you want to remain here at 147? Um, to I, to I finish my uh, my goal, and then my goal is to become undisputed welterweight champion of the world. So, when I become undisputed, I I definitely move up. But until then, I'll be standing at 147. I don't care if I got to cut a leg off. <laughs> <laughs> You've been uh, your advisor is Al Heyman. Al Heyman is the brains behind Premier Boxing Champions. Uh, they just turned five years old back uh, a month ago. Can you tell us about what PBC has meant to you? And, and you've been uh, one of the cornerstones of what PBC is all about and introducing it to the masses and, you know, fighting on network television and not transitioning into being a pay-per-view fighter. Oh, uh, PBC, PBC meant a lot to me. I mean, just fighting on Fox and the exposure I was getting. Like, the exposure I was getting as the – as five and oh, six and oh, seven and oh, I mean, PBC, you know, did that with Showtime and, you know, fighting on Showtime, now fighting on Fox, you know, just the exposure. Like, every fight was on TV. Every fight was on TV. Even if I had a swing bout, which was like one or two times, you know, for for some reason. You were in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was on TV, you know, so. You know, PBC done a lot for my career, just gave me that exposure and gave me fights and, um, you know, even if, you know, somebody, even if somebody didn't make weight or something like that, they got me another pony where I didn't have to be like, oh, I'm not fighting this. I'm not fighting this fight. I'll fight in two more weeks and things like that, and I make weight for no reason. So, I mean, just as development stage, you know, and even right now, they've done a lot for me. Even Al, you know, he has done a lot for me, especially with, you know, you know, with money-wise and save my money and put my money in different investments and stuff like that, you know. I was not not only just you know just a boxing manager. He want to make sure that you know everybody's good and you're good. You know when you retire from boxing or when you want to retire from boxing. You know he does the way to that point. You know he was talking about me retiring from boxing when I first started. When I was like 22 years old, he was like, you know, we gonna start talking about retirement. I'm like, what is he talking about retirement? <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't fought pro yet. He talking about retirement. But um, you know, as I see it now, being thirty years old, you know, you know, he 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 helped helped out a lot in my career, and you know, made sure you know I was smart with my finances and stuff like that. So now he made it made sure that you know if I wanted to retire now, I could. So 
you know, I'm just grateful for, you know, being in that whole stable with, 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 with Al and the other fighters and, you know, PBC and things like that. You know, it's, it's, it's a blessing. He seems to have a genuine love for you guys. Like, he genuinely cares about your overall well-being. Is that fair to say? Oh, definitely. It's, it's definitely fair to say because, I mean, not only with me, you know, I'd heard about, you know, different fighters, you know, he didn't, he done helped out or, you know, made sure, gave him the option, you know, of, you know, he gave a lot of fighters the option or do you want to, you know, make sure your finances are good or, or do you want, you know, all this money now and just blow it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, he's a key to options. It's, it's up to you to be smart. So, uh, you know, that's the, one of the things. Because I was going to – one of the things, it was either top rank or Al when I first turned professional. And, you know – So you were still between the two. So they, those were two. those were the two major options. Yeah, there was two, there was two options. Top rank was trying to give me a whole bunch of money. And, like, Al wasn't trying to give me that much money. <laughs> he was trying to give that much money, but he was like, you know, you stay focused and do what you have to do. You know, we'll make sure that, you know, you're good and, you know, you don't have to want for nothing or anything, you know, later on in your career. But Tyrone was trying to give him money now, and then actually my dad, you know, convinced me to go with, with Mr. Heyman because he was like, you know, you too worried about right now. I'm a young kid. I want some money. I'm broke. Oh, I got about yeah, you, you want all the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got like $5,000 in my account. I'm like, man, I'm trying to go with top rank. They trying to give me a signing bonus, things like that. But, you know, I didn't understand, you know, I had to pay that back. And, you know, and Al wasn't talking about right now. He was talking about later on in my career. You know, I was too focused on the now instead of the later, you know. And, and Al helped me realize that. In my, in my, actually, my dad helped me realize that because I was worried about the now instead of later. And, uh, you know, helped me realize that. And, um, you know, that's how I signed with Al. And, you know, and, and, you know, we talk often and, um, you know, it's just nothing. But I get nothing but genuine love for him, even from this crooked game that boxing is. Boxing is very crooked. You know, I get nothing, you know, but love for him. And I feel like I've been sheltered a lot because I haven't, you know, been through anything that I hear a lot of athletes, a lot of boxers go through, especially, you know, money-wise or different managers or, you know, promoters and things like that. You know, I haven't been through, I haven't experienced it at all. I haven't experienced any crookedness and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm just blessed to be in the position I am now. And it's it's rare to get, you know, somebody like that. If I had two questions for you, Errol, I know that you're typically a quiet guy, but are you excited for the cameras to be back in your face and for press conferences to happen? I mean, because I tell you what, when you had that first presser with you and Sean Porter and you guys started mixing it up in Las Vegas prior to Pacquiao Thurman, that was an Errol Spence that typically doesn't, that I don't hear from or that I don't see. And you guys are going back and forth and telling him I'm going to knock him out. He was going back and forth with you. His dad was getting involved a little bit. But are you excited to get the cameras back and doing the press conferences and handling all the media week obligations before you step inside that ring? Um, definitely. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, it's my time now. This is my time. This is my time to shine. And, um, you know, like people like Adrian Bronner, you know, Tank and, I, and Robert East, I don't, they know my real personality. They know how I really am. And, um, and even so how are you really? Uh -huh. What's your real personality? What, what is your real personality? <laughs> you more of a jokester, kind of like to clown around a little bit? Well, I clown, I clown a lot. I clown, I clown around a lot, but um, you know, you'll see in the you know in the in the coming uh, months and things like that. Once we get, you know, once we get back into the, you know, the swing of things and stuff like that. But I am excited. I mean, I am excited for it, and um, you know, I'm glad it's finally coming back. You know, like I said, I got a second chance, so you know, I'm not taking it for granted at all, and I'm not taking taking this opportunity for granted at all. And, um, you know, I just want to show the world that, you know, Earl Spence is still the same, you know, not the same, but I'm even better and I'm more improved and stuff like that. And finally, Errol, what do you want to tell all your fans that are watching all over the world as we continue to deal with this horrific uh, pandemic of the coronavirus? And hopefully we see you back inside the ring and boxing is back. Because, man, I tell you, I miss it a whole heck of a lot, man. I miss being ringside, calling fights like yours and, and all the top quality world-class prize fighters around the world. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of YouTube fights recently. <laughs> and that's, that's something I got away from because before – 
I before I used to watch YouTube fights all the time. I used to study YouTube YouTube fights religiously, and um, that's something I got away from. So it's something I'm getting back to now, just studying different fighters and stuff like that. But um, you know, I want to tell everybody, you know, during the time, just to you know, stay in the house, you know. Stay away from people as much as you can, you know, stay close to your loved ones, speak to your loved ones, you know, especially, you know, your, your close family, like mother and father and grandparents, stuff like that. And um, just praying for everybody and hopefully, you know, we get through this tough time and uh, get back to, you know, sports because <laughs> I'm bored <laughs> watching all these documentaries and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, just everybody stay safe, man, stay gloved up and, you know, keep the mask on and, um, you know, just keep praying for everybody. That's all we can do. Hey, Errol, thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to see you back inside the ring. I hope your family, I know your grandmother in New York, all your family in New York, hopefully they are safe and sound. And we look forward to seeing you back at the fights and inside the ring before another Errol Spence fight as you defend your welterweight championship of the world. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Errol Spence Jr. joining us. That'll do it. We'll see you next week on Time Out with Ray Flores. Errol Spence Jr. joining us.